Here on Breakfast, though, we're speaking foreign languages with a man who's fluent in 11 of them. Here he is. Um, right. What was that, Alex? That was Russian. Saying? Good morning, you're watching BBC Breakfast. Now, Marvelous. chances are, very few of us had any idea what he was saying, because a new report says the UK has an alarming shortage of people able to speak a different language. We're going to be discussing this with Alex in English uh, before 9 o'clock this morning, but we have to get the news, travel and weather where you are, which you can probably say in, in French, French or you? any language of your choice. <laughs> Just say that, what's on your queue there, um, to translate it. Maintenant, c'est l'heure pour voir les nouvelles, euh, les voyages et le temps où vous êtes maintenant. Perfect. Parfait. Hein? <laughs> Brilliant performance by the French. Vraiment incroyable. Oh. Peut-être. Funny that you should say such a thing. <laughs> I think so. Because we're talking about languages now, and the British Council thinks that for too many of us, we don't speak enough languages. It says there's an alarming shortage of people in the UK who can communicate in the 10 most important foreign tongues, including Spanish, Arabic and French. Well, here to talk about this is John Warren from the British Council and Alex Rawlings, a German and Russian student at Oxford who also speaks, what is it, eight other languages? A total of 11 anyway. We heard you giving us a marvellous demonstration earlier. Good morning to you both. First can of all... Well, I was going to well, say, say, first of all, can you say in French, uh, do you speak French as one of them? Yeah, yes. sketchingly. <laughs> Are you able to say that goal was clearly offside? No, in I'm, French? I'm not good on football vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> no, in German, the Yen French is, don't want to hear German, it anyway. Yen is tova. Offside, yeah. Ups, yeah, offside. So what upside, upside, upside. upside. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there we are. See, even with the experts, can't quite <laughs> get it right. So we've known for a long time, though, haven't we, that, that Brits aren't very good at foreign languages, and yet somehow we seem to muddle by because everybody thinks English is the global language. Yes, and I think this is the, this is the big myth that uh, I would personally like to shatter with this report. I mean, what we've got here is a look forward over the next 20 years, what the UK really needs. Mm. Uh, we've got all the old favourite languages on that list, Spanish, French, uh, German, the European languages. But take a look at some of the new languages that are on that list, uh, Mandarin Chinese, uh, Turkish, Arabic. And what we can see there is that these are countries and parts of the world that we want the UK to engage with, we want the UK to trade with, we want our young people to go and be able to work with. And really in those countries, if you don't have some smattering of the language, you're not going to be a success. Mm. Um, Alex, you speak these 11 languages. Which ones do you speak? Um, Greek, uh, German, Russian, French, Spanish, Italian, Catalan, Dutch, Afrikaans, Hebrew and English. Mm. You're helped by the fact that you, you, part of your family is Greek anyway. Yeah, my mother's half Greek. Okay. But you, you, how, how would you find it so easy to learn languages? Um, learning languages is a skill that I think I've developed um, as opposed to having been born with it or anything like that. I mean, I've, because I've been studying so many now, I've really got to understand how it is that my brain works, um, what kind of techniques I can use to learn the most efficiently, and, um, you know, having done it at least once, I'm now motivated to keep doing it. So. Yeah from that point it gets easier and easier. I can understand why you'd learn many of those languages, but things like Afrikaans, why, what leads you to learn Catalan and Afrikaans? Um, I mean, I was just growing up... the challenge? Up partly the challenge, but I mean, also I'm interested not just in the language, but in the culture, and learning the language is a brilliant way to access that culture and learn more about that country. Mm. Um, and I mean, I grew up in London at a time when there were a lot of South Africans and Afrikaans speakers on the tube, and I wanted to hear what they were talking about. John, um, we, we know there's been pressure on, on Man for Mandarin Chinese to be mm. sp taught in primary schools yes. uh, I I here in England, but it is pretty impenetrable. Is it necessary to have the full language when you go and do business in these places, or is it just a courtesy thing that you learn a bit? Well, I think this is the great thing that Alex shows you, that if you can get a passion and an interest for it and you're prepared to make a start, then uh, it's amazing how far you can go. So I think we were discussing earlier, the, the thing that we would most want to say, I think, about this topic is that there's nothing intrinsically difficult about languages. We all speak them. There are 800 something million... Something intrinsically difficult about Mandarin Chinese. 800 million people uh, have, have managed to get there. <laughs> so, so basically, we're all born <laughs> linguists. The thing is to give ourselves the self-confidence, the self-belief, and also to have a try, to take those first steps, to have those one or two words that actually get a, uh, the beginnings of a conversation. And as you say, you know, it may well be that you're not going to conclude a business deal in perfect Mandarin Chinese tomorrow. 
but the courtesies and pleasantries, ni hao, say say, the things that basically mean that you're making some sort of effort are there for all of us. Um, how many languages do you speak? Uh, two for me. I speak uh, speak French uh, well, Spanish a bit, mm -hmm. a little bit of Cantonese, uh, and I would. I would always, always, always make sure I had the common courtesies before mm. getting off a plane to do something for the British Council. Mm. All right. Arigato for, uh, for Japan, you know, just, mm. just pick up the one or two words that you're going to need to be pol polite and pleasant. Yeah. Mm. Alice, going to put you on spot then. Yeah. How about in Russian? Yeah. Good morning, welcome to breakfast. Here is the main news this morning. Now in Afrikaans. Goedemorgen en welkom naar BBC Ontbijt. Hier is de die hoofdnieuws van vandaag. Die hoofdnieuws. That sounds good. Okay. I think that's right. Good, isn't it? What do you hope to do with all your languages? Um, I don't have any kind of massive aspirations to to anything huge with them. I mean, for me, it's always been a hobby, um, and it's something that I've always enjoyed doing, and I've always been enjoyed being able to travel as a result of them. So, as f long as I'm enjoying it, I'm going to carry on doing it. And are you it. learning new ones all the time? Currently, no, because I don't have much time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and your head's full. <laughs> yeah. When, well, once I finish university, I'm planning to pick up some more. But for now, I have to concentrate on that. Mm. John, people watching now, uh, it, and you're saying, you know, the thing you're going abroad, going to have to work mm. <coughs> internationally at some yep. point. The first language, which is the first language they should try to pick up? Oh, that's a tricky one. Look, my personal favourite, I have to say, it's Mandarin Chinese. I would, uh, I would, I, oh, I know it's a it's tough one. A I tough know, one, but though. it's a tough. If you, if you want a European language, Spanish is a great European language. Uh, like their football team, scores from every single angle. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting that Polish doesn't make your list of the mm. ten important ones, and yes. yet we have a very integrated, engaged Polish community here now in the UK. Is that because? the Poles who come tend to just pick up English very quickly. Well, it's also because we're looking at the entire stock of languages that the UK has, so you'll also see that Indian languages don't make our list, and it's because we have a good proportion of our population that is able and good in all of the in Indian languages, and it's the same for, for Polish. We have a very, very good yeah. stock of, uh, of... So we've got enough good, Polish people yeah. who speak Polish. As we, we know, more we, people the, one of the paradoxes of the UK is we've got huge linguistic diversity. Yeah. There are 200 yeah. languages spoken here in Manchester, 200 in London, 175 in schools in Tottenham. We have got languages in our midst. We just need to uh, make more of them. Well, it puts right. me to shame. John, Alex, thank you. Spasiba. Danke. Merci. What's the Gracias. Japanese? Oh, Japanese Arigato. Arigato. Sign on that. How many can we get? That's, that's as far as we're going. <laughs> Those are all the phrases I had on the back of the envelope. Thank you this for morning. joining us. This Thank morning. you. <laughs> it's been lovely to see you and talk with you.